The Dauntless. They only had time for two sections before things were finished for the day. It was a three-day course after all. The trucks of Area Green and the scout vehicles of Area Orange. The next one over was a general look over of air cars and the differences between them and strict ground vehicles. There were no tanks in the trainee motor pool, but that made sense. Those were the really big toys, and to be frank, there was no room on Centris to pilot those around without causing a panic. No, that bit of their training would have them shipping out to Zal War to finish it off, hunting tundra worms with artillery for both practice and community service. Still, training for the day was done and they were in the mess hall. Sky had a heaped up platter of carnivore delights on his plate and was looking forward to it. His spot is at the end of a table with a free seat next to him, and then a moment later, another soldier flows into the chair next to him, literally flows. It's a slobe woman made of lime green goo with her core hidden under her uniform with a tray piled twice as high as his. Ah, food, she exclaims before slamming her goo head into her tray and puling it back with the tray clean and empty as the food is visibly pulled into her anatomy. She then turns to him. Are you going to eat that? Yes? Jesus Christ, woman. He leans into the English he learned in his surprise and she walks away laughing. Some races are lucky like that. The recruit opposite of him, a tret man, notes. Lucky? They can just shovel it all in at once and then get back to other things. I don't think it's lucky. The recruit next to the tret states. Like all Agila, she's huge and verging on titanic in size. If they eat with their whole body, then they taste with it too. I don't want to know what the inside of my boots taste like. Skye makes a face at that thought before grabbing his fork and quickly getting a bite of the meatloaf. Apparently, it was a mess hall staple. Ground meat with some binding additions and small bits of vegetables for the nutrients that you don't normally get, shaped into a loaf brushed down with a tasty sauce and baked until it's cooked through to kill as many parasites and bacteria as possible. Apparently, the human homeworld was absolutely lousy with both, so all their food preparation was a way to fight against that madness without killing the taste or nutrition in your meal. Couple that with some crispy bacon on the side for crunch and a cutlet of pork and he had a very filling meal. One he needed as his body was going through the self-enhancement adjustments and needed raw fuel to keep it going. Protein and calories were high on everyone's list. He's licking the last of the bacon grease off the edges of his pincer as he grabs his glass with the other. The fruit drink is nothing short of delicious, even if it's something he normally doesn't consider having but it's been tested as carnivore safe, and as he's here for newer and better things, he... A hand falls on his shoulder and he turns to see an officer behind him. Recruit Davies. There's a communication for you. He lowers his pincer slowly. What's going on? Private communication, recruit. I don't know. The officer replies. Well, that's fair enough. He wipes off the remaining grease from his pincer. I'll take care of the tray. Get going. The Agila offers and he nods and thanks. He's quickly led into a small private room and there's a call on hold. He activates it and is somewhat startled to see that it's his older sister on the other side. Older, but not eldest. Where are you? Mom's hurt, Dawning Light demands. What happened? Skyward Bound asks and she takes a breath. I don't know. No one's telling us anything but her own venom is in her abdomen and blood's on her tail and do you know something? Dawning Light explains and then questions him as he visibly sighs. I didn't see it, but I can guess. Mom pulled off her boss woman routine and started stabbing her stinger all over the place, but she was speaking to the head of the Undaunted at the time. Wait, you actually did sign up for the army? Skyward bound, what were you thinking? I was thinking that I wanted to be something other than the obedient little boy who never does anything. Mom disagreed and it looks like she disagreed in the worst way possible to the last person she should do that to. Skyward Bound says in shock as he tries to picture exactly how Admiral Cistern could have, no, 
He was an officer, not a field agent or ground pounder. There had to be someone else in that room. Someone that manhandled his mother when she got too rough. Someone that overpowered an Andinus tail and redirected it into them. That, that's not easy to do. The tail is strong and while flexible is also fast and has a lot of locks built into it as a way to keep control of it. In order to force an Andinus to self-sting, you need the kind of strength that is far from casual. Of course, that just opens up the suspect list to literally every single undaunted, but still. There were only two other people in that room beyond his mother. The man behind her was not in position. But if the Admiral did it, then he managed to wrestle his mother into submission from across a desk. He's not sure what's scarier. The idea that the Admiral is someone that can just demolish an opponent that gets to him, or that he has a completely undetectable bodyguard. Either way, it's something to watch out for. Skyward Bound, what do you know? Mom tried to pull me out of the Undaunted a few hours ago. If she pushed too far, where are you? It's best if we speak in person. He asks, and his older sister stares at him for a bit. Then she gives him the information. He steps out of the teleportation archway, and after a quick check to the left, he then sees his many sisters to the left as well as his other mothers. The entire cyclone of Andinus start moving the moment he's spotted. Being the only boy in a family that has hundreds of members means wherever he goes, there's a tension poured down on him. The clicking and syllables flow fast and hard around him as they rush him, and he waves his stinger a few times to signify he needs some room. A couple of clacks of his claws for attention and the flow of words blending together into an incomprehensible mess tapers off. Is my mother all right? She's had her venom safely extracted and is resting well. She's going to make a full recovery, but, but she got hurt, Skyward Bound notes. She got hurt trying to save you. Dawning Light pushes her way to him and tries to loom over him. But now that he's standing up straight and proud, she only has maybe half a pincer's width on him. Save me. I signed up for the Undaunted under my own initiative and I don't regret it. I spent today getting stronger, learning and bonding with other people. How is that time wasted? How is that a bad thing? I'm getting paid to be a better me. In what way is that a failure? It's a failure when you throw away your future to chase a pipe dream and nearly get your mother killed in the process. How dare you put your whims over the safety and health of others? I did no such thing. She came screaming up to a military commander and threatened him. She's lucky she wasn't killed. Skyward Bound protests as he pulls out his communicator to show the video of her doing just that, and Dawning Light swats it out of his pincer. Don't pull out your communicator at a time like this, you ungrateful little cretin. You're taking the side of the people that have hurt our family. What is the matter with you? Does loyalty mean nothing to you? Dawning Light demands and Skyward's tail stinger twitches ever so slightly as he tries to remain in control. Flying off the handle won't help. It won't help. It will not help. I was bringing it out to prove what Mother had done and how this all happened. He says slowly, carefully, clearly, and now you're ready to attack you disgraceful little... Dawning light begins, and as she speaks, he has it all click and he calms down. And why are you looking so smug? He doesn't answer. There's no point. She wants him angry. She wants him to lose control, so he can counter everything she says or does by keeping control. Answer me. Why are you so smug looking? Are you happy this happened? Do you like the idea of letting down your family and breaking hearts? Dawning Light is trying to loom over him again. Her words dig deep, but he lets them go. Well, not so much letting them go as forcibly ignoring them. She will not win this. She will not take control of a situation she not only doesn't understand, but has little to do with her. If anything, he just matches her gaze not even looking at her and thinking even as she fumes more and more. Then she moves and he catches her pincers with his. His right foot reflexively slides back and provides a more stable stance as they pincer wrestle. 
Then as she throws her larger weight behind her offense, he suddenly turns and she's sent stumbling even as he takes a deep breath. Say something. She hisses at him. Answer me. Is this what you wanted? Can you find no words to justify your actions? There is nothing I can say in any language that you won't twist. He answers plainly and firmly. That's all he needs to say, as dawning light lets out a low, chittering sound and charges. The entire family moves as it's clearly chosen. Its side as dawning light is grabbed from three sides and held in place. Her tail and pincers are held firmly, but no blood is being shed. He still says nothing as he looks around for this communicator. His younger half-sibling Morning Dew hands it to him. Thank you, he says as he quickly brings up the video and starts it playing. The family then gets to see as his mother makes numerous demands, screams in the face of, and then threatens a military officer. She stabs the desk time after time and is given a warning, one she ignores and pays the full price of. He was not legally required to call the ambulance. Now I do love mother. She's my mother. But she's overbearing and entitled, thinking that just because I was hatched out of an egg that she laid, that she somehow owns me. And you seem to think that because you hatched before me that you have the same rights. You do not. Even if mother did have the right to claim me as a slave, you wouldn't. You're not a slave skyward. Your sister and mother are worried. His other mother, Bountiful Hunt, states, and he clicks his claws somewhat in disbelief. It would be easier to believe that if they had both not grown so furious that I had made a choice of my own. He answers before smirking. I came here to ensure that mother would be all right and to explain things. I've done this as best I can. I am returning to my training. What is it you want from them? Dawning Light demands, and he slowly turns to regard her. I want mastery of my own fate. I want to be more, more than I am, more than I've ever been. I want to be better, and I'm going to get it. He answers before walking past her, even as she's let go by the others. It's good to see everyone's in fine health, but I will be very busy for the next few weeks. Training is not something to take lightly. He doesn't look back as he heads to the teleportation arch and quickly sets it the floor he wants. He walks through and is out of the hospital and heading to the air car he had signed out moments later. It's only when he's back on the dauntless does he finally let it out, in the gym, against a training dummy. His pincers are more for grasping and cutting, but he can hammer them into a target like nobody's business.